around four months ago, a very famous YouTube channel, Veritasium, made a video on 1982 SAT problem. And the problem was, you are given two circles, circle A and circle B. Now the circle A, it rolls around the circle B until it returns to its starting position. How many revolutions of the circle A are there in total? Now the problem with this question was, there was no option which matches the correct answer. And out of 100,000 students appearing for the examination, only three of them got the answer correct. Now we are given that ratio of circle A to radius of circle B is 1 by 3. So basically, suppose if this radius of bigger circle is capital R and radius of smaller circle is small r, then we are given that R upon R, it is equal to 1 by 3. Now the paper setter must have thought that when a circle A rolls on circle B, in one rotation, the distance covered by this circle A will be equal to 2 pi r and along circle B, the distance it needs to cover is 2 pi capital R. So in that case, number of revolutions will be simply 2 pi r upon 2 pi small r, which is r by r and this value is 3. So number of revolution must be 3. But then this is completely incorrect and in fact not the option matches the correct answer since then a lot of people have actually made a video on this problem but what most of them have been doing is rather than giving a numerical solution they have been demonstrating the real life answer rather than solving the problem so here what we'll do is we'll provide a numerical solution to this problem and for it you just need to know basic physics so we have our two circles circle B and circle A. Now this is center of circle B and this is center of circle A and the circle A it rolls over B or to be more precise this A it rolls over B without slipping. Now their radius are capital R and small r. Now suppose linear velocity of this circle A it is V and its angular velocity is omega. Now in rigid body dynamics we know that if linear velocity component of the center is V, then linear velocity component of every point will be V. So at this point of contact, say this point C, it has a linear velocity V. And since it is also rotating with an angular velocity omega, it will also have a linear velocity which is omega r. Now we know that in rolling without slipping, there is this condition that velocity of point of contact, it must be zero. So from here we can write V equals omega r and that's our first equation. Now first what we'll do is we'll calculate the time taken by the center A to complete this whole circle and come back to its original position. So what is the distance covered by this center A? So the distance covered by this center A it will be nothing but it will be circumference of this dotted circle which is 2 pi r plus r. So that's your distance. Now since linear velocity is v, time taken it will be simply distance upon velocity. So it is d by v or 2 pi r plus r upon v. Now what we'll do is we'll multiply and divide everything with small r. Now this v upon r is nothing but it is angular velocity omega. So we can write this t as 2 pi r plus r upon omega r. Now we'll take omega on the left hand side. We can write omega t and omega t is nothing but it is theta since there is no angular acceleration. So this is equal to 2 pi r plus r upon r. Now theta is the angle rotated by this circle. Now we know that in one rotation angle covered is 2 pi. So here number of rotations will be given by theta upon 2 pi. And if we take theta upon 2 pi, it will be nothing but it will be r plus r upon r. So this n, it will actually be capital R upon r plus 1. So this is a general formula for this problem. So number of revolutions in this case, it will be simply 
r by r is 3 3 plus 1 which is 4 and that is the answer to the question which was supposed to be here among the options but it was not there so when we were wrongly solving the problem the assumption was the small circle it is going to cover this distance which is equal to circumference of this bigger radius and it is 2 pi capital R and here it is small r. Now had this been a straight line in this case this is v. Now time taken here it will be 2 pi r upon v and again here v equals r omega again multiplying and divide it with r we can write this as omega so it will be 2 pi r upon omega r and omega t is again theta so we will write this as theta upon 2 pi so theta upon 2 pi it will be r upon r which in this case is 3 so had the circle been rolling on this straight line whose distance is 2 pi r then number of revolutions would have been 3 but since it is not a straight line, this straight line itself is curled along a circle. We will have one extra rotation and that is why number of revolutions will be r upon r plus 1. So effectively when the circle A rolls over the circle B, it is not covering the distance of 2 pi r but it is actually covering a linear distance of 2 pi r plus r. So the linear equivalent distance along the circle will be 2 pi r plus r. The alternate version of this problem is coin rotation paradox. So in which if you have two identical coins and if one of the coin rolls over the other coin, so while the intuition says it should roll once, but the mathematics says that it is going to rotate twice when it reaches its original position. Now rolling of two circles is also linked to revolution of earth around the sun. There are also this effect is taken into consideration. If we'll get into a little more detail, you'll get to know about sidereal days and other related concepts. So this is how it is actually done.